Let me show you the region of convergence for the left-sided Z-transform, which is the type of infinite sequence. From the equation of the left-sided Z-transform that we have, x of z equals to summation of x of n times z to the negative n, where n starts from negative infinity up to zero. This is the typical formula for the left-sided Z-transform where we go from negative infinity up to zero. Let me show you graphically in real and imaginary plane. This is my real and imaginary plane. It is actually a complex Z plane with real axis and imaginary axis. RE means real, IM means imaginary. The region of convergence for the left-sided Z transform extends inward. It extends inward from a finite pull. So look at here, N starts from negative infinity up to zero. So we are approaching zero. Our last point, our last point will be zero. We come from negative infinity, like from negative values, negative two, negative three, negative ten, negative one thousand, whatever you have, up to zero. Now you will be confused that look, I have only negative values, so I'm gonna come from the negative side. It should only happen from the negative side, from negative up to zero. But why there is a circle? The region of convergence for the Z transform expands throughout the imaginary and the real plane. It depends on what type of Z-transform you have. For the left-sided, we have different region of convergence. For the right-sided, we have some other type of region of convergence. Now the bottom line is that you cannot limit it, that you just take a negative side, because you are coming from negative infinity up to zero. For example, if your n is negative two, that is negative two, you're gonna start from negative two, so your circle will be this one. If you start from negative three, from negative three here, you will have that circle. So right from this point, you're gonna consider all this region equally throughout the plane. Let's suppose this is my negative four. I'm coming from negative four. So I'm gonna consider negative four here and will equally move around throughout the plane, throughout the plane. That's what region of convergence means. The region of convergence for the Z transform converges throughout the plane. In other words, we can say that we start from negative infinity up to zero, which means that something is decaying. It is squeezing towards the center. Or we can say that we are approaching, we are approaching towards the center because our last point will be zero. The region of convergence for the left-sided Z transform approaches towards the center. It is something squeezing and squeezing until up to zero. So the radius for the left-sided Z transform will be R sub L. This L means left side, R means radius. So R sub L will be the radius for the left-sided Z transform. The region of convergence for the left-sided Z transform exists for the minimum value of the left side radius. It should be a minimum value because as I said, we are decaying toward the center. So R should be minimum. The left side, the radius for the left sided Z transform should be minimum when it comes to the region of convergence for the left sided Z transform. Remember, region of convergence for the left sided Z transform is for the non causal signal. It will be for the non causal signal. But look, sometimes we have this kind of equation x of z equals to summation of x of n times z to the negative n, where n starts from n equals to negative infinity up to n equals to negative one. You may come across in many books or in many other sources that for the left-sided z transform, they have this kind of equation where n starts from negative infinity up to n equals to negative one. Last time we had n equals to zero. If you are doing it for the unit circle, then you're gonna put n equals to negative one, which means that it depends on the radius. If the radius of the circle is one, you're gonna put n equals to negative one. If the radius of the circle is two, you're gonna put n equals to negative two. If it is three, you're gonna put n equals to negative three. It depends on the radius of the circle. But since it has been taken for the unit circle, the radius of the unit circle is one, therefore they have n equals to negative one. Let me show you graphically here. This is my real and imaginary plane, which is the complex Z plane. For the region of convergence, if we include the unit circle, remember, the radius of this circle is one. From here up to there, the radius of the circle is one. Therefore, it is a unit circle. This is the equation for the unit circle. If the radius of the circle is one, 
you're going to start from negative infinity up to n equals to negative 1. Why not positive 4, positive 3, whatever? Why we don't have any positive value here? Because look, we are dealing with left-sided Z-transform. From the left-sided Z-transform, we mean that we come from the negative side. It starts from negative infinity up to something negative. Look, last time we had n equals to 0, which means that the radius of this circle is 0. Remember, this is not the perfect, this is not the perfect graph for this kind of equation. Because here my radius is 0. So if the radius of the circle is 0, then you're going to put n equals to 0. Remember, when it comes to the radius, which is 0 for the circle, it means that we don't have any circle. I repeat it, this is not a perfect graph for this kind of equation. I'm just showing you that how the region of convergence looks graphically. The radius of the circle for this equation must be 0. Look here, the radius of the circle is 1. So it is a unit circle. Based on this unit circle, we have the equation for the left side is the transform. Suppose if the radius of the circle is 2, you're going to put n equals to negative 2, not positive 2 because we are dealing with the left sided. As I said, we start from negative infinity. You always take, always take the region of convergence from the last finite pool. What is my last finite pool? My last finite pool will be 1. We are coming from negative side. Suppose my last finite pool is negative 1 here. Negative 1. From the last finite pool, you're going to consider the region of convergence. Before negative 1, we don't have region of convergence here. But when it comes to the last finite point, which is negative 1, remember we start from negative infinity up to negative 1, so our last point is negative 1. From negative 1, which is my last finite pool, right after this, I'm going to move equally, equally, equally around the plane. And this blue is the region of convergence. I hope you got it. Suppose, if the radius of the circle is negative 2, here, if it is negative 2, so my last point will be n equals to negative 2. I'm going to consider the region of convergence from negative 2 towards 0, not on the left side. So on the left of the negative 2, we have nothing. We have negative 3, we have negative 4, we have negative 5. They are not included. Right, right after negative 2, I will move around the circle equally, equally, and this will be the region of convergence because my finite pull will be negative 2. You always take the region of convergence from the finite pull towards 0, not on the other side. But then don't forget, you can't only deal with this half plane. Right from the finite pool, you have to move equally around the plane. This will be the region of convergence. Something is decaying toward the zero. So here we are decaying towards the zero. This is going to be the equation for the left sided Z transform for the unit circle. Remember last time we had n equals to zero. This is the basic equation for the left sided Z transform. We start from negative values up to the zero. This will be the left sided Z transform. n equals to zero means that the radius r sub l equals to zero. This is not the graph based on this equation. I'm just showing you the general concept of the left sided Z transform. When it comes to its mathematical expression, it starts from negative infinity up to zero. But for this equation, since n equals to zero, the region of convergence does not exist because the radius of the circle will be zero. Remember, for the unit circle, we have n equals to negative 1. If the radius r sub l equals to 1, n equals to negative 1. If the radius r sub l equals to 2, n equals to negative 2. If it is 3, n equals to negative 3. Then we have the region of convergence. Otherwise, for n equals to 0, the region of convergence is also 0.